prone to hyperbole in my job, but this has the added benefit of being true. A celebration of what is clearly the greatest college basketball team ever assembled, the undefeated 1976 Indiana Hoosiers. It will be a great time to uh, reminisce about the greatest season ever put together by a college basketball team. And we'll start things off if we could move the mics uh, down the way back and forth. The first question is for uh, legendary sports writer, IU Hall of Famer, and the preeminent IU basketball historian, Bob Hamill. Uh, Bob, so they don't have to t talk about how great the team was themselves. If you could provide historical context of just how great this 1976 team was and what made them special and unique. Well, I think, first of all, the players wanted me up here because that way I won't be out there asking questions. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, we've had uh, 40 years of, uh, of reminiscing. That's a very good word for what this team has uh, generated. A lot of memories, and uh, those are never going to leave. We're never going to lose those. The, the, the consistency of this team from uh, uh, one game to the next, when win 37 straight Big Ten games is just uh, beyond uh, imagination. And they did it at a time when you had to uh, go to every other team, every other school in the, uh, in the league, play before its biggest crowd, its most passionate crowd, and wearing that number one on their, on their uh, back as the uh, number one team in the country. Nobody could beat them, and nobody has matched them since, and I don't think anybody ever will. And if you look at the, uh, the extras that they accomplished, like the tournament route they went through, consider the, uh, uh, St. John's would have been probably the Big East champion had there been a Big East at that time. They beat them, and they played the winner of the SEC champion against the ACC champion. Uh, in, the, in the Sweet 16, that's where they played that team. And, and that winner played the number two ranked Marquette team, at, which became number one against number two, and that's the reason we have seeding today, so they don't ever have that before the Final Four again. And then they advanced from there to play the Pac-10 champion. So, so nobody's ever going to go through that kind of route again. And these guys did it uh, and, and made it all the way to uh, to Michigan, which was probably the really number two team in the country by the time they played them. And it was a, a remarkable run and just a privilege to cover it. Quinn, how special is it for uh, this special team to be back together uh, on a night like tonight celebrating the 40th anniversary? It, uh, it's humbling. It really is. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of those of you who came out uh, to support that. And uh, as it was being put, uh, Considered and put together, one of the things that we all felt was important that um, that those around the team who were part of that were every bit a part of the team, and seeing some of those faces has been been wonderful. I, I, you know, it's it's as high an honor that that I've been a part of in in, <laughs> in my life, um, and I, I don't necessarily mean necessarily going undefeated, but to have my teammates come back for this uh, for the university, and, and it looked at. It has stood the test of time. I, I didn't realize, um, like Coach Knight used to always tell us, we probably didn't know half the things we needed to know, but as Bob is pointing out the things that we did, had no idea, so it's special to be back with these guys again. Next question is for uh, J Jim Robertson. Uh, Scott May, National Player of the Year. Uh, one could describe him as a perfect basketball player. He was a great defender. He could shoot. He was strong. He could rebound. He was athletic. What was it like to go against him in practice every day? <laughs> Bob is doing it again. I don't know why. Uh, you already gave the accolades to Scott. No more needs to be said for me. I was just uh, filling in the role of trying to uh, help the team the best the way I could to try to keep him ready for each game. There's nothing uh, special. He had the accolades, and along with Quinn and Bobby, uh, I didn't add any extra uh, to that. Scott, uh, talk about uh, Bobby Wilkerson. Um, one can make a convincing argument, the best defender who's ever played for Indiana. Uh, what, what was it like to be his teammate? I just think for me, and, and 
and Bob is just, when you got in trouble and you needed help, he, was, he would always be there. Um, I was telling him earlier today that two of my favorite words was help and switch. <laughs> you know. But um, to have a player so versatile, long, gifted, athletic, um, was perfect for our team. And uh, man, there's, there were so many games where, you know, he guarded the center, he would guard the point guard, um, he would do a lot of damage defensively. So uh, to have him uh, uh, was really helpful for us. Kent, maybe the greatest game ever played in Assembly Hall was uh, the contest against Michigan, and it came down to a big play at the end. Talk about that that moment. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody still question it? It was good. Uh, no, it was a it was an incredible uh, situation that we found ourselves in, and, and uh, we knew uh, coming out that uh, they were going to be looking for Scott to, to take that shot. And, you know, when Quinn ended up uh, with the basketball and, uh, <laughs> at that time, uh, you know, he, he did what he knew to do with it, sent it up to the basket, and uh, it ricocheted off, and of course, uh, <laughs> but it ricocheted off into the hands of Jimmy Cruz, who made an incredible play, threw it back up towards the basket. It went off the, the backboard. I was up there, got a chance to tip it in right as it went through right as the buzzer went off. So, no question about it, it was good. <laughs> coach Cruz, uh, you're a great and accomplished coach yourself. What was it like to uh, learn from a master like Bob Knight and how important he was to building this program to where it was in 1976? Well, one of the things I really appreciate about Coach Knight is when you can assemble a, a group of guys, and so a group of guys that you meet the first day of school as a freshman. And now we look at it 40 years later and you're still good friends. So the people that he put around you from coaches to managers and, and friendships that last 40 years, that's pretty uh, incredibly cool. And very, as Quinn said, humbling with it. And I, I just like to tell just one little story that kind of sums up my feelings and you know, I think about the teammates is we're playing over at the University of Illinois and Scott was the best player in the country. And I, I don't know if it's our junior or senior, I can't remember. But, and we're winning by 25 points. So, you know, our coach wasn't that brave, but he finally put me in the game. We're winning by 25. And so Scott has not come out of the game because he's gonna rest in a second. But I actually make a good pass to Scott on a back cut. Now Scott is, you know, front of Sports Illustrated, the best player in the country, unbelievable guy. He makes the bucket and gets fouled. It's not important, we're 25 points up. Scott May sprints to the top of the key and gives me a big bear hug. So here's a guy that comes off the bench that's not that good a player and he makes you feel like a million dollars. That's what's really cool about these guys and the teammates that you've had for 40 years and Coach Knight put together. Tom, uh, the first game of the year, Indiana played UCLA, it was the defending national champions. They had a New York Yankees-like run in the, the decade prior. Indiana handled them pretty good in that first game of the year, but UCLA talked a little bit after that game about how, well, we'll get them the next time when it counts, which was the NCAA tournament. And you put together uh, one of your all-time great games. What were your reflections uh, from that second contest against UCLA? Well, I've got a lot of reflections. The first thing, before I even answer that question, there's a guy out here right now who was as big a part of what we accomplished in our 76 team, and it's John Laskowski who's sitting right over here. And Laz was part of our, part of our team. He's, he's like a brother to all of us. I mean, we went through everything together with Laz, Greeno, you know, that whole group. And so anyway, Laz is what made it possible and in our early teams, and especially that 75 team, which we think there is not a better group of players ever assembled than that team. We just didn't get it done, you know, to win the whole thing. So we were excited uh, the first game of the season to play UCLA because they had won the national championship the year before. And it was our first chance to get back on the court after Kentucky had beaten us to knock us out the year before. Honestly, I don't remember one word that the UCLA players talked about, and I think that's what made our team, I think, pretty successful. Coach Knight had a way of 
making sure we didn't get caught up with the media and, and worrying about that stuff. But um, that game was a big game, the Final Four game, and like you said, it was you know a good game for me. But you know, whoever had an opportunity to perform and, and do what they could do to help us win, that's that's all we were all about. And so that's the game was significant because it gave us a chance to get to the final game, and then we we ended well. Next question is for uh, Scott Eels. You were the young guy on that team. What was it like to uh, to jump into that and go against the greatest team ever assembled right out of high school? Well, when I came in, Quinn put his arm around me and he said, freshmen should keep their mouth shut. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I ought to. Um, no, honestly, you know, I came from a little small town of 5,500 people in Illinois, and I had no idea what Indiana really meant to the state of Indiana and the university, and it didn't take long to get here, and it was, as everybody keeps saying, humbling to, to finally be with this group of guys that are a step above everybody else in the country. And I learned so much not only about basketball, but about life from them and coach. And so it was, uh, it was a Definitely an honor to be a, a part of this group. Wayne, maybe speak to the to the brotherhood of uh, this this great team and how those friendships have carried on in the years since. Well, it's carried on great. I'm I'm a lot younger than these guys, but <laughs> one thing that I can tell you is I learned a lot from. I mean, what Scott said about QB is true, but the guy to my left, him and Quinn, they uh, I thought they were my parents because they. <laughs> They punished me in practice. And I used to ask Aber and Greeno when I was a freshman, is it always like this? And Greeno says, man, these guys love you. I said, they have a hard way and a tough way of proving it, but it makes you grow and learn and understand what Indiana basketball is all about. And I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Bobby, uh, next question's for you. Sitting next to you is, uh, Ken Benson, who's one of the most decorated players we've ever had, what was it like to play with him and watch him operate every single day? Uh, say that again. <laughs> Ken, Benson was, Ken Benson was a really good basketball player. Talk about how good Ken was. Um, Ken, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was, it was good. Me and Ken played against each other in high school, so I, I already knew him already become friends so I was happy to see him uh, come to Indiana University uh, because I knew that uh, he could add something to the team and it would just take work because I was really glad he got there because Coach Knight didn't have to holler at me no more. So he, he took it over for Kent for that whole year and I blossomed after that so <laughs> all was well. <laughs> But uh, Kent, Kent come in and he, he, he went through the growing pains like we all do. Our, our whole thing was we didn't know what day you're going to be in the doghouse, but we were sure it was going to be at least two out of the five. So <laughs> we look around and say, who day is it today? And if I had mine yesterday, I said, well, Kent, look like you're up. <laughs> so, but it was, a, it was just a pleasure that he came in and he, he did a lot of great things that, to really help us and uh, along with everyone else. But you've got to have a big man in the post. And he was big. <coughs> He, was, he just ran over me, and I got out of his way. <laughs> Next one's for uh, Quinn and Scott. There's a photograph uh, after winning the national championship that's probably the most iconic, famous photograph in the history, not just of IU basketball, but <clears throat> the entire athletic department. Where Coach Knight's there smiling, you're hoisting the trophy, and both of you have the nets dangling around your neck. Can you? Recall what your emotions were at that time after uh, winning the NCAA championship and kind of the, the elation after completing that goal. I just, I think for me, it was a mission accomplished. <clears throat> you know, we had uh, fell short the year before and uh, we lost uh, Green and Laskowski. And I'm sure that everybody was like, well, can they, you know, can they do it? And for me personally, <clears throat> you know, I had an injury and I was fighting my way back the whole year. And uh, to go through the season that we had, to almost get beat a few times, um, to not quit, to not lose, and uh, to be down at half uh, in the Michigan game and uh, come, come back in the second half and 
just beat the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> Get that on there. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was like mission, mission accomplished for us. And, uh, you know, we had, uh, we had worked so hard, come a long way, and uh, it was just a, a, a great feeling for me. Yeah, I, I would echo that. Um, <clears throat> And yeah, I was relieved because I didn't have to go through it anymore. You know, I won't lie. <laughs> I mean, that, you're, you're 18, 19, 20 year old kids. So that's just the reality of the situation. But to go through it and have the kind of success that we had um, and, and do it in, a, in the fashion that we did it, yeah, it was special. So it was, it was jubilation. There was uh, relief. But uh, I think all of us, and I, you know, I, 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 I'm at risk here because I'm speaking for the team. The biggest part of that that I like is I see the smile on Coach Knight's face, and we didn't see that very often. So you know it's a memorable moment. It's a moment when you see that on his face, and we all, I, I, that was kind of, uh, that's a reflective reaction to the picture, but my initial reaction is like Scott said, mission done. And c could I say this so we can clear the air? Uh, people always ask me, which team is better, the one in 75? for the one in 76. And I always say, if you win, you're the best. If you don't win, I mean, how can you say that, that you're the better team? We can have an argument on it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta win. <laughs> Speaking of winning, no matter what the sport is, there's always the countdown to see when the last undefeated team in that particular year is going to lose a game. How tough was it to have that on your back all season long, people gunning for you, knowing that you were the last undefeated team in, in college basketball and going on that great run. How tough was it to deal but, with that game in and game out? But isn't that what you want? You want the challenge. You know, you want the opportunity to play every good team. We don't want any cupcakes. You want the best teams, you want to go play them, whether it's their place, our place, on the playground. And, uh, and I just think that's what it's all about, to have enough having the chance to win every game, having a, taking everybody's best shot, and uh, that's kind of what, what we did. And to that point, you asked the question about the UCLA game. I recall this part of it. When Coach Knight asked, and I know he, it was Scott and I, he asked about whether or not we should play him. There was not a hint of, of, of a pause. It was yes, for that very reason. If we were going to be considered the best, we wanted to play the best. And it, it was on a neutral court, that's fine. But I, I, in retrospect, we felt that confident about our team. And, and so, yeah, you want to play the best. If you're going to be the best, I want to beat the best. And I want to beat you at your best. In the years since, being the last perfect team in college basketball, voted the greatest team in the history of the NCAA tournament, um, what has the response been like from Indiana fans in those 40 years since when they, when they see you and talk to you about being on that undefeated team? Well, I'd just like to say that it, uh, every day, uh, ever since that, that day in 1976, we won a national championship. We've had an opportunity to relive it. It's like it's been, it just happened yesterday because people want to know, the fans want to know uh, what it was like to play with these guys, what it was like to play for Coach Knight, uh, what did it feel like when you won a, a national championship and gone undefeated. We got to, to, to live that every day the last 40 years. So it's like it's, it happened just yesterday. And uh, it's, it's a tremendous honor. It's, it's humbling. And it's also, uh, and I, was, I think I speak for the, the guys on the team as well, is we appreciate the tremendous support that the Hoosier Nation has given us throughout not only our playing days, but throughout the 40 years uh, up to this day. And we're so thankful for, for the tremendous support. Well, uh, I think this because this is something that I remember from senior day, and I've said it in other broadcasts. Coach Knight said it, and none of us knew what he meant. And I say it to those who see this wherever you see it. It is history. He said, take a look at this team. You'll never see another one like it. And I remember that to the day I died, and I sit here humbled by that thought. With that, uh, we'll open it up uh, to the media for a handful of questions before we get on over to uh, watch the game and watch Indiana beat Wisconsin. Does anyone uh, have a, a question for the panel? Yeah, I got one. Greg? What did you guys learn during that season that's been applicable to your 
<laughs> well, for me, I think one of the most important things we learned that there's nothing we can't do if we put our mind to it. Coach Knight really motivated us, but it still took us to have that desire to push ourselves because he could only do so much. So we had to take it upon ourselves to be committed to becoming the best we could be as individuals to come together as a team. So that speaks well for, for life. There's anything you do, you know, if you give it 110%, you can achieve it. And there's going to be trials and tribulations along the way, but you have to get back up and, and keep going after it. So it's a, it's a life learning lesson through sports. Uh, Coach Green said that he invited you guys to come to practice and to even go into the locker room today before the game. Have any of you had a chance to talk with any of the current players and have you given them any advice or any words of wisdom? We, we, we got here and came right to this, this event, so we have not had an opportunity. Yeah, there was a few of us that went to practice oh, today. No, that's okay. You, you didn't invite us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're here to support those players and in in the coach and the and the team. So we're Indiana, they're Indiana, and we are after this on our way over uh, to Assembly Hall. Many of us are going to be in the locker room to just be there to to encourage and, and support these guys. Like. We had a lot of encouragement and support when we were going through our four-year run here. Greg? Um, Scott, Scott May. Um, as, perfection was, as perfection was mounting that year, how was Coach Knight behind the scenes? Did, did he, as you guys got closer and closer winning it all, how did he react to the pressure and all that? What was he like? I just think that Coach uh, kept everybody away from us, kept the media away kept fans away, closed practices. Um, and he really did a heck of a job of keeping us focused on the day. You know, we're practicing today, uh, get better. We're practicing tomorrow, get better. Um, I, I, you you got to give him an A for effort of, of how he controlled everything around us. Mm -hmm. You know, from, from the media, fans, going to class, um, he made it pretty normal for us. So, if you, if, if you know, you're asking me how much pressure, um, there wasn't any. I don't, I don't think for us because our day was, we got practice, we got to get better, you know, we got a game the next day or, or, or whatever it was. So, um, I'd have to say, and everybody else can can fill in also that it, 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 it we didn't feel it if it was there, and even as we got to 20 to 25 to 30. And whatever championships that we won, we just we just didn't didn't feel it. We just played because we felt the goal was to win the title, but win every game and win the title. Time for one more. How much do you cherish being the last perfect team? Is there any part of it? How do you think about the '72 Miami Dolphins who celebrated each year with the last unbeaten? I don't know about anybody else. I, I, I don't really. This, this sounds whatever it sounds. I don't care. I don't care what anybody else does. This team will always be remembered for what it did. And that is the part that I, that I if you will, hang my head on. This is my own personal view of that. Somebody else may be defeated, but they, they won't do what this team has done, this collection including Coach Knight and those people here who have been a part of, of IU basketball. That makes it special. And I really don't mind some kids who have the same aspiration achieving that goal. If that's what they do, they're fine. It doesn't, in my opinion, take away anything from what we've done. Well, thank you very much for uh, sharing your reflections on behalf of everyone who loves IU basketball. Thanks so much for coming back here. Thank you.